What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the KCM Finals. It's time for Terran versus Zerg, the conclusion here of Season 3, 2024. Here we go. All right, I know it says last there versus Saxory, but that is certainly not last. It's really unfortunate that we don't have him uh, in the... Uh, Starcraft universe right now. I mean, oh, can you such a great player, man. The, the only guy homage. to actually get inside Lava's head and really frustrate him. Yeah, I guess Royal is a fan as well. A little homage there to last. Um, with his uh, username on Battle.net. But this is indeed Royal. Royal versus Saxer to start out here. What is this map? Oh, this is... um. This is that, uh, I, I want to say, um, with the high to low transition, with yeah, the, in the center. I, I want to say, I'm so terrible with names. I yeah, I, I, I'm super bad with names, guys. I apologize. This is like that, um, what is it in the matrix when you see a cat the second time? Uh, deja vu. Deja vu. Kind of like deja vu, but it's a, another name for that. Um, throwback or something like that i'm thinking kickback now but throwback uh it is a very standard style of map we've got the big high ground in the middle which is a little bit weird but pretty basic in terms of just the general layout of the first two bases yeah um i kind of like these uh these these ramps with the double eggs on them as well i, I want to see things like eggs utilize more in maps i, I think it's kind of becoming a, a new standard and I, I think like the evolution of map making is on a, a good trajectory right now and as long as we keep experimenting with a few ideas like this we'll, we'll keep making some interesting maps and uh, i really do find this lo the low to high ground transitions in the center very interesting on this map uh, i'm not too sure how it will play out in zog versus terran so much um, we might see some whole position lurkers or something like that at some point um, in these series but maybe not too much yeah, it's possible. Um, tank pushes not going to be as big of a factor in uh, this matchup. We're mostly going to see, I uh, think, Marine Medic out of a player like Royal. Uh, not yeah. really much of a, a mech player at all. And so those, those high grounds probably won't matter as much as some of these other matchups. But then the placement of the third bases and the the lack of kind of high grounds around the map might be, or high ground bases around the map might be uh, impactful. Um, we're probably going to see third base from Saxory up in the top right hand corner if I had to imagine like natural or main base is going to be the choice yeah. here. Yeah, it's very quick layer at Saxory as well, making that like 2 minutes 54 or something. So wants to rush into that rather than optimize for lava and what have you so very very fast tech two hatch rebuild maybe electing to make a fairly early on base third in this top right pocket potentially and from rush or from royal excuse me we don't have rush in this lineup royal is trying to push out with a little bit of pressure here four marines and as scv will absolutely beat four lings but he's going to back away here, especially with good targeting. You can definitely take that out. And with high ground, it's pretty strong. But Saxory does have that Overlord over there. He sees the Marines coming. And Royal decides it's not worth it. He's just going to back away. More drones popping out right now. Ooh. This is... He called his bluff there because, I mean, last could have... I mean, sorry. <laughs> Royal could have made something of this and, um, you know, pressed the issue a little bit. But actually, like, Saxory didn't make any additional Zerglings whatsoever. So he just made nothing but drones behind us. A little bit greedy from Saxory. I mean, you know, Royal could have pressed the issue there, maybe get something done if he'd just like assumed that you know, Saxory may be a little bit greedy. He just, you know, wrongfully assumed Saxory would make at least one additional pair of links there. Well, that additional greed here going to pay off for Saxory as he sends out a drone. He's actually going to take the base that I never expected him to grab here. Center right is going to be his third expansion that's the closest base to him but it's definitely yeah. not the most easy to defend there's huge no. huge entrances on both sides of this 
And Saxory, I mean, what type of, type of style is he going to pull out here? Is it going to be just a three hatch muta all in or perhaps he's going to go into like a Hydra Defiler late game? What do you think is the plan here for Saxory? Yeah, I think this might be a bit of a Soul Key style where he's going to rely on like, you know, mutalist control for map control purposes, but then moving into like mutaling cleanups to, you know, keep the bio away from these bases altogether. Maybe that will be the style of choice here from Saxory to navigate this going forward. Some good ma micro here just to keep an eye on the wall. See if he can slip a Ling in there. Roll a little bit too good for that. Not going to let it happen. He's doing a good job of preventing any scouting going on inside his main. And we haven't really gotten a shot of his build here so far. But it looks like a plus one build from Royal. Wasn't clear on the timing of that. But um, it's really looking like that standard three to four barracks after an early plus one. He's just going to be sitting back in his natural, uh, waiting for the mutalist to come to him with lots of turrets and marines in a defensive position. He should be able to hold on against this rather quick mutalisk attack. Yeah, three barracks is like the, the, the mid-range Terran style usually. You can go into making a fourth barracks to kind of give you a bit more presence and getting out onto the map against the mutalisk um, threat a little bit earlier on and what have you. But yeah, around about two or three is like safest to tech up fast but still have a strong infantry force to have some map control. And it's actually doing a pretty good job of shaving off some of these marines already, but nothing crazy has transpired. We see a, a slightly slow factory. I mean, around six minutes is when you want to start making that at the latest in terms of your speed of your tech but he's making that roughly on curve but not that early to be honest one marine managing to slide all the way around the outside of the map making his way here into the third base and disrupting some of the mining i don't think any kills have gone on from that but doing a good job here just slowing saxory down a little bit on that third base he will get the third gas up and operational here shortly a bit close there, Saxory keeping his Mutalist healthy though, shaving off a few extra SCVs here and there. He's done a little bit of damage to the mineral line of Royal, but nothing too severe, like three to four right. SCVs at the max. Kind of want at least like four to five in order to yeah, make things even. Yeah, about five or six, you can start to feel kind of happy as a Zerg and kind of ease off the gas pedal a little bit. But until you've got that like 5-6 SEV kill count, you have not really done much of a dent to the Terran. And now we see quite a strong infantry force already uh, moving out onto the map. Uh, not enough of a Marines have been jailed. There is only three medics with this force though, so he needs to be careful not to overstim too much. So Saxtree is kind of just like trying to force out as much stims as possible. Great trades here from Saxtree actually. Kind of caught the forces split up there, only fighting one ball of bio at a time. Now going to be wisely retreating after shaving that down just a little bit. Armory going to be coming online as well here for Royal. So I imagine he's going to be wanting to get into some Valkyrie support rather than waiting for vessels, which will take a lot longer to come online. Valkyrie support here is nice, but we've got the transition already on the way for Saxory. I imagine he's going to be going into Hydralis Defiler play and opening up Valkyrie against that. Not going to be the strongest. Still a lot of mutas popping out here. So Saxory making sure that he has enough to hold off this bioforce. He's done a great job so far of just shaving that off and slowing it down. Um, but, I mean, Royal, he might get caught here with a tech that just is not going to do anything for him uh, in a moment. Once those Valkyries pop out and the, the Lurkers are online, uh, it could be a, a bad situation for Royal. I wonder what he'll respond to that with. I, I wonder if he's... Oh, he, he did see the third base. He knows exactly where it is with that one Marine that was sent around the map. So uh, he knows where to scan if he wants to check, but he's only got two scans. He can check the main uh, and the natural, but if he doesn't scan the third, he won't know that that's coming just yet. Well, that's one of the reasons why this uh, expansion position is like actually a good choice. Um, oh, actually kind of catch, maybe catching this Valkyrie just barely gets the micro on that. So not going to be getting killed that and gets the, the shot off on those muters. So starting to suffer those muters, Valkyrie dangerously low and about to go down. But yeah, he has been able to hide this expansion for some time by taking it there. Like that's one of the last positions Royal would have uh, expected that to be. But he's going to be identifying it now and uh, moving forward with quite a large group of bio hitters. 
couple of Stunkins with some Lurkers along the way. If he pulls the trigger right here, right now, he might better get in this expansion, do a lot of damage. Yeah, I think he is going to be able to get in here. This is really scary for Saxory. His transition was a little bit too slow. The Lurkers and Hydras not making their way out in time to defend this. He's going to cancel a bunch of these lurkers here and that one goes down oh man he's gonna lose the third base i think this is just about it for saxer he's played a, a fantastic game in terms of his mutilus control um but just not hitting that transition properly and royal shoving back those mutas with the valkyries turned out to be a great move yeah, yeah, this is why Valkyries are so... Oh, this, this whole, this, I, I thought we might be seeing some whole position uh, um, tactics on this map. Uh, we did see an attempt of that by Saxory, but unfortunately that gets spotted right away. Uh, he's going to be catching some of these Valkyries. I mean, the game's not technically over, but it is a rough spot. He kind of needs a little bit of a... Uh, you know, a bit of stars to align for this win, like like him falling for the the whole position lurker tactic, getting a little bit of compensation for losing this expansion is kind of required going forward. Even being overlord blocked right now, unable to produce anything is a little bit of a nightmare. But this is why Valkyries are so strong; it allows you to hit for this sort of like ten minute mid uh, game timing with vessels, which are kind of waiting closer for like eleven minutes. As as we can see, these first two vessels here now, this is a much more normal vessel timing of radiate being ready and able to you know get across the map and do something. Thing. So having that really sharp window to abuse Saxory, kind of just too much room to overcome. He needs a much better muta control to get through that mid game and just wasn't able to do so. Muta control was actually really, really decent, but just the timing on the lurkers a little bit off there. Maybe if he'd picked off uh, some of those Valkyries, maybe if he had Scourge ready to go yeah. right as the Valkyries were coming out or something like that. I guess I can agree with that. Now we've got the Lurkers trying to push forward here. This is kind of a desperate last attempt from Saxory. Uh, these are all the units that he can really muster right now. And Roll's doing a good job of kind of shaving them off little bit by little. And he's mostly just sitting in his natural waiting for Saxory to leave this game because he knows that Saxory uh, is in such a poor position. He has to make something happen now. And the only way Royal can really lose is if a Defiler makes its way into the natural and traps all of his units. Now running forward here with a whole bunch of Marines. He tries to get one of the snipes on these Valkyries, but or on these uh, Science Vessels, excuse me, but the Science Vessels get away. They come back to throw down their radiates here comes some more scourge there's the two defilers this is the last hope of saxory he's gonna consume one of his uh irradiated i think uh lurkers he throws down another dark swarm a first dark swarm excuse me and he's almost at the natural it's very close right now can he actually get up here He's got well, 700 gas in the bank. What's going on with Saxory's economy right now? Well, he's kind of in shambles a little bit, and he's kind of like for, for, he's, he's trying to pump links. He needs links to help support this, so he's not really able to spend his resources wisely. But because he went um, uh, Valkyries before vessels, there's not a lot of radiates. If he could just catch some of these vessels with Scourge, it would be great, but he's not able to, undo, able to do so. So these, these vessels will keep building up energy and churning out more and more radiates over time, but Saxory's dangerously close to this natural expansion. Uh, Royal trying to desperately hold on to some ground, but Saxory seizing it from him now already in range of this bunker at the natural expansion, buying just a little bit of time. But it won't be much longer before Saxory is knocking on the door, and this may be a little bit of a moment for Saxory to get to the comeback here. Well, this is big. We've got lurkers in the natural, although there are still plenty of uh, science vessels alive. They can start to hit this, and the reinforcement train has been cut off. You can't continue to push forward here um more lurkers into this position because of all of those marines he's gonna try and make one desperate run around here he actually gets the lings up to the front this is kind of big he's gonna be able to get the consume he will lose this defiler though defiler is gonna end up going down here comes two more dark swarms in this natural okay he only gets one off but it's good enough it's right on top of the ramp the lurkers are gonna burrow here all yeah. the scvs are likely to go down here we go tons of damage here on these scvs the marines and the natural are gonna end up going down as well valkyries coming in killing a bunch of overlords they're gonna get pushed back but saxory is supply blocked he cannot make any more lurkers he cannot make any more units he's got 900 gas in the bank is it time to take a expansion here saxory does he just have to win now 
Well, it's, it's a bit of both, right? If, the longer he denies mining, it's okay for the game state to continue, but it won't be long before he re-secures his natural expansion. So Sakshi actually needs to expand here as well as harass the SCV line as much as possible, do what damage he can. It's, he's still in a really desperate position, though. It's going to be very tough for Sakshi to win from here. He might stay alive for the time being, but without securing a third base, it's, it's only a matter of time before Royal recovers and puts the pressure back on again. Well, with eight vessels, um, just that alone, I think, might seal the fate here for Saxory. Eight vessels is yeah. so hard to contend with. That is, you know, eight lurkers or, you know, six lurkers and two defilers. How can you possibly sustain all of that damage as Saxory? He's just going to come forward mass irradiate everything here and you know Saxer he can hold on for now but he's going to be losing way more gas units than he can actually produce yeah, he does manage to land a pretty big plague on those vessels, which is basically what he needs to do is get like a miracle plague and then somehow get lucky and snipe all the vessels with either hydras or muters, maybe somehow get a big enough tempo swing in the tech units where he can survive long enough to secure a third and what have you. But it's a very tall order. Uh, there's a, a lot of things kind of need to align for that to transpire. So Saxu's kind of like just rolling the dice and hope he keeps landing sixes, but it's only a matter of time before he rolls a one or something. 70 supply advantage at this point. Um, Saxory, I mean, he has every right to stay in this game, but he is so far behind. Royal's never going to let him back in, never going to let a third base stand. So, I mean, the it, it's starting to look pretty futile here. Yeah. And flying through with these mutas, maybe he can start to pick off some of these science vessels, but. He sees the third base online. He's trying to harass that right now. Go, go kill some vessels. No. Okay, he gets one. But he loses his mutas. And GG is called. There it is. Royal takes game number one. Saxory goes out first. Terran's on the board. All right, jumping into kickback. Shine getting sent out. <laughs> Dude, wasn't I talking about this earlier? That they were going to send out Shine on kickback? You were. You were, man. That's so funny. This guy, fearsome on a new map that hasn't been tested. He is that guy who's going to find the optimal strategy uh, right. to, to kind of take advantage of the weird geography of any new map. And so it's being sent out here. It makes a huge amount of sense for the Zerg squad. What will Royal pull out, though, on kickback? This is such a weird map. We should really talk about it, Shun. Yeah, I mean, you kind of have like an an easy three base, and if you if as Zerg you secure the other choke points or one of these other quadrants in the corners, you basically got access to six gases. It's kind of insane. So you do tend to see like builds that are more orientated towards the economic macro scale. However, that opens the door for your opponent to exploit you with some sharp timings as well. And yeah, I mean, I think if this is cross position, then you can kind of kick back and relax a little bit like the map name in, in kind of entails but i think if you're vertical or horizontal that's no longer the case and there's a lot more room for shenanigans with drop play and direct you know base access for mutalisks and what have you yeah i think that's a a good observation being in horizontal spawns here does change this map and the way you play it out quite a bit let's see what shine does when he spots Royal down here in the bottom left hand corner. He's actually going to try and get the moving shot. Looks like he missed it. And so he will send that drone down to the bottom left. Will he make something here at the front? Looked like he was Lucky thinking one, about it. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna go He's going to intercept this. the TV a little bit. And we will see the wall in. No marines there just yet. So. He knows that he doesn't need an immediate sunken colony or anything. There's the first Marine coming out. Let's see where Shine sends his third drone. Oh, it is over to the normal location um, inside of his main base. So he's going to take a quick three base here. Not a surprise. Um, on this map, it's very easy to hold here. Just going to build a sunken maybe at the front. 
Yeah, yeah I mean, three hatch before pull is still a little bit ballsy, though. I mean, yeah. he is kind of like banking on no aggression out of Royal whatsoever, and that's why he's so desperate on denying the SCVs coming in here for a scout. Right. If uh, if Royal gets a uh, wind of this, he he might be able to punish. But I don't know. I, th I feel like he's he's obfuscated the build order long enough that maybe now he's gonna be relatively okay. I don't think he's gonna just just die to any kind of naked marine move out or anything. Yeah, just build one sunken colony and then he can go all drones after this, right? No need for even building uh, a single link. Well, I mean, he'll have to make a second sunken for the, the two racks timing at around mm. like two, for, for four minutes 50 and what have you. Yeah, right. of course. But, but yeah, besides that, yeah, he can more or less just chill and drone right now. And that's going to become a very powerful economy. We do, do see the two racks coming out of uh, Royal though. So I imagine he will be applying some pressure at that five minute mark. Maybe Shine has identified here that a very quick three gas into just pure mutilus pressure could be strong. Um, you know, there's a the high so. ground, high ground for your natural base, um, which if Shine gets in there really quickly and starts to harass that, like he can, right. he can harass your natural. Um, Marines coming up that ramp are going to have a hard time, and then he can quickly uh, swap locations down to your wall in and start to hit that as well. That's two supply depots out in the front. I'm yeah. starting to see a plan coming together here for Shine. Yeah, I, I think I think we will be seeing something akin to that. Uh, I think that that's definitely good game theory as well from Shine. Uh, I, I can't fault him in that theory at all. Although he, he's, he's slow in taking any additional gases right now, so he's definitely committed into optimizing his economy. So I don't think we're going to be seeing an all-in necessarily, mm. but we may be seeing a lot of pressure nonetheless. So we haven't seen that second gas just yet. I wonder when he's going to take that. He's adding on more sunkens here. Three sunkens and a Hydra Den. Well, Ooh, that is very okay. interesting. I wonder what the plan is here with that Hydra Den. Evolution Chamber at the front, just to buy the time. Is the theory correct here for Shine? Is he actually going to be able to hold this off? You He's should. actually buying some time with that Evolution Chamber. Very well done. And the Sunken Colonies <sighs> will finish. But can he hit this Hydra Den? Oh, man. He oh, can man. hit the Hydra yeah. Den. That's a little bit rough. That's a little bit rough. I mean, it prevented the run by, but at the same time, it's it's going to mess with his tech. He's going to have to replace it, so it slows down the lurker tech timing, which means he may have to make an additional sunken as well, um, which is a little bit, you know, haphazard of a, a start. Not not super optimal. Not min maxi. Yeah, he's going for the fourth sunken already. He he knows it. You know, he wants to be super safe, and you, you do need to be super safe. But it's a little bit of annoyance to have to take a little dip in your economy when you're already, you know, so far ahead of your economy. You want to just keep you know, boosting and going like crazy. But nonetheless, he will be going straight into Hive like we would expect and a little uh, afterthought Spire because he will be needing some kind of a Scourge and what have you to deal with any kind of um, stuff or tech units out of um, Royal. It's, it's also possible he would have been facing some kind of um, uh, economic two-port Wraith build or um, very fast dropship play or uh, Valkyrie play here. So I'm wondering if he'll end up making Mutalisks anyway. It's looking to me like Royal wants to hit a fantasy timing here with Valkyrie and tank yeah. on the way. But he starts the science facility. That's a little bit different. Um, than what I was thinking, but he definitely has siege mode on the way, and he's going to try and pressure these sunken colonies at the front. What kind of damage can he do? Can he actually get through these sunken colonies? Or are we going to see a defiler in time? This is a very fast hive. I mean, I didn't see the timing of the Queen's Nest relative to when he started the machine shop, so I can't say for certain, but it looks like there will be a timing. Um, Shine may have to make an additional sunken or two spread out. Um, it, since these sunkens are pretty tight together, he will get through them reasonably quickly, but one tank does take a long time to chew through this, so I'm, I'm not too sure. I don't know. It, the fact that he's already here hitting this 
line. There's, I, I don't know. Like he's not made any additional sunken jet either. So as long as the the second tank doesn't arrive too quickly, maybe he'll be okay. But without any mutilix on the way, there's no way of catching the second tank en route. Okay, there is mutas. He needs these mutas to catch the second tank, and then maybe there's a good chance it. Ooh, a drop coming through here at the same time. Did he see that? I think he did. He's going to bring his mutas over yep. here. This should be a complete shutdown. This is going very well. First shine. This is huge, huge, huge pickoff. Everything as it pops out is going to die, and he can chase this down as well. I think he's going for, like, Guardian or something. I haven't seen a Defiler's uh, mound yet. Did you see a Defiler's mound? Uh, no, I have not. I haven't seen that. So it's, it's possible we might be seeing a bit of a Guardian play here. And there is a lot of dead zones to exploit um, behind these expansion areas. So Guardians oh, would be a very wow. wide strategy, especially with these horizontal bases. And he's coming in. There's no turrets even finished right now. He's kind of hoping that everything will be focused on the defense against the siege push. But that gives Shine a little bit of a window to come to the natural expansion and kill quite a few SCVs, siphon off a little bit of the prowess of the Terran's economy. But, I mean, he is making pretty significant progress on chewing through these sunken. He's edging forward. Does needs to keep scanning though. There is lurkers here as well, so can't just wait for the tanks to break the sunkens. There's the guardians defensively positioned at first. Gar defensive guardians being made right now. Shine sees the tank marine army moving back. This is a great decision by Royal. Doesn't want to get caught by those guardians. I think he's figured out what the, the idea is here for Shine. He's just going to pull back, get the rest of his tech online, and yeah, this guardian play isn't really going to do too much. Oh, he's moving out kind of uh, brazenly here into the map. Uh, will he be able to dive on top of this? One irradiate. That guardian is dead. It's going to be pulled back here just to die uh, on its own in the back line tanks are running from this guardian play it's very strong against the tank push and shine has done a good job of shutting this attack down he's got lurkers coming up to the front now can he actually push in towards the natural or does he need to pull back i mean guardians they have a very short shelf life they do not survive for long oh here right. comes a big round of hydras now too hydra guardian play here from shine but the Hydras are going to get caught coming across the map and losing these means he's not going to have much anti-air. Are we going to have some Wraiths? There they are. Wraiths are coming out. He needs these Hydras to deal with the Wraiths. And he manages to get three to the front, but these can be picked off very quickly by a few tanks and the reinforcements are being stopped right now. I think that Royal is doing a great job at handling this, but he's starting to lose production. Yeah, the Hydra speed kicked in a little bit too late. Most of them got intercepted. Thankfully, three did make it through to the front line, so these Hydra, these Guardians won't just die for free. So he has got a bit of a point defense for this Guardian threat. Getting on top of the Terran production. Tanks already rolling in, though. They're going to be cleared up very quickly. He's going to do a sandwich pincer maneuver now. Clears out the Lurkers from the western flank, and now going to get on top of these Guardians. But there's not a lot of bio left over, so he will trade reasonably well with these Guardians, even though they will all die eventually to these Wraiths. Gemini missiles anyway. I think... Oh, what a few are just coming in actually shine can keep pressing the issue right now he can keep the point defense going get on top of the terran production and keep siphoning up more and more units from royal he might better use this as a game winning move potentially oh my god this is crazy those guardians hanging on forever as the marines were surrounding them i thought for sure all the guardians were gonna fall but this is holding really strong here shine absolutely calculated this perfectly and he's breaking through he doesn't even have armor or anything like that he had no time to to build an armor upgrade on that spire he had to morph it into a guardian or uh, into a greater spire so quickly one lurker pops out scvs are going to be at, up here at the front blocking one tank and a couple of marines there is all that's holding on for royal keeping him alive in this game and shine is going to uh, keep pushing forward i guess he could try to grow it on the map though now royal is just stuffed into his base and in a really defensive position switch up into uh, defiler and hydra might be the right choice at this point but i don't well, see any tech change well he killed he killed quite a few of the barrackses so he's only producing like two marines at a time right now so there is a bit of a critical timing where if he keeps non-stop production of hydras morphs just like you know a few more guardians he can come in for like round two fight with royal because there won't be a lot of bio to 
to just barely fill these bunkers even like look at this it just he's not even got enough marines to completely fill all three of these bunkers right now with just those two barracks churning out units so critically shine cut off a lot of the production head uh, he has been able to reproduce a few of those barracks now so finally starting to fire on all cylinders again is royal but now there's already another fleet of guardians moving to position for another round here well i'm really afraid that shine is actually going to throw this game here because there's so many vessels to throw down radiates and he's missed his opportunity to tr to change tax yeah. like he's not going to be able to switch into defilers now the guardians are all getting irradiated he is starting to hit the bunkers and there's a few more seconds here before more radiates come out but there's another one um the guardians are drifting forward here pretty annoying stuff and scvs are just going to repair i think he holds i think he holds shun it looks like it. It looks like it, yeah. I mean, this is very efficient from Royal having the SUV to repair as up line. Like, here comes the Hydra trying to pounce on it, but it doesn't look like it's going to be good enough. That siege tank fire is just way too cost efficient in that tight little bottleneck there. The Hydra is just completely melting. Not many Guardians remaining as well. There is a Defiler Mount finishing up, but I mean, at 13 minutes 30, it's just so late, and I don't know how he's going to hold on. I mean, he might survive temporarily. He has actually secured the 6 o'clock expansion, so we'll be able to get some more gas coming in. And if he can somehow keep uh, Royal at bay here, which is a tall order with how many vessels are already in the fleet right now, there's just going to be an absolute rain of irradiates coming down, descending upon him. I don't know if he can manage this. Uh, it's a real shame that he didn't decide to transition a little bit earlier here. GG is called. Oh, man. It was looking yeah. so good for the Zerg squad. The sh shine on kickback. I really thought he had the magic formula there to take down Royal, but Royal hanging on, making the correct decisions, building tons of bunkers and lots of defense, pumping up that overall science vessel count in both games turned out to be incredibly important. Who can actually take this guy down? We've got Jadong and Queen waiting in the wings. Let's see who they send out next. Okay, Queen getting sent out here on Radeon. The most standard map, the most well understood map maybe in the map pool currently. Right. Um, That's for sure. That maybe makes sense here. Queen, very, very strong player when he's in his comfort zone. I wouldn't want to send him out on kickback, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Maybe with, uh, you know, the Terran player finds a chink in Queen's armor and you've got a great player just eliminated to some little uh, timing and you're very upset about that. It makes sense to have Shine on kickback and Queen on this really standard long rush distance map. I mean, this has the longest rush distances in the entire map pool on pretty much anything. So, yeah, uh, we should see a fairly standard straight up game out of these two players, unless um, Royal's got a very strong two time, uh, you know, two base timing push or something. Yeah, it makes sense. Well. What are we going to see here out of Queen? Looks like a 12 hatch. That's no surprise. Royal. He's just so strong when it comes to the Valkyrie pushes. I can't imagine him not doing that again unless there's something really different out of Queen. Like, it feels like he just has so much presence and pressure on the map when he goes for that type of play. Yeah. He's very good with Valkyries as well. Not many players are adept at, you know, getting the micro down and being confident and, like, you know, getting reliable value out of that unit. I mean, it, it, it has a lot of potential as a unit, but it does require a little bit of finesse to get the juice out of that, that particular fruit. And not many of these guys are, you know, particularly good juicers. So, and Royal is one of the few that can actually squeeze enough of the juice out of the orange to make it worth it. CC first. Coming out of Royal, bit of a gamble play, but it's going to pay off big here against Queen, who's uh, reliably standard in his approach to this matchup. He's just gone for that 12 hatch, and I think we're going to see a pretty big advantage here coming for Royal. Yeah. No, no links can be made yet, and just a simple bunker here at the front will be sufficient to hold off any lings at this point. Double rack's going to follow this up. The drone will sneak up here into the main, get a scout of that two racks play, so he knows that it's not like a quick plus one or anything, you know, getting super greedy here from Royal, but this will be 
a fairly quick move out with the two racks getting these two racks on line very very quickly after this cc finishes i mean this is this is a good economic position for royal to start this game from yeah well, Soki is going straight into eight links. I wonder if he will do a little bit of a ling bust timing here. This is interesting. He may, he he could just try and all in ling this right now, but that's also a huge huge risk. So I'm curious to see if he does shut down this SCV. He does kill the SCV scout. So if he wanted to, he he's at least representing the possibility of an all in ling flood. So he so then uh, inversely, Royal has to respect that and keep a lot of SCVs not mining right now just to make sure there's no potential wraparounds because he knows that even though there's only um, six to eight links here right now there could be a lot more additional links being made behind us well this is um a bit crazy right queen he could get a lot of damage here but he's also potentially sabotaging himself for the later parts of this game drones all popping now so just a bit uh, putting a bit of fear of god into no. royal and tr transitioning back into uh, oh, okay, he's gonna go for it. Let's see. Can he actually get this round on the bunker? Great blocking here so far with the SCVs. Oh my goodness. Perfect blocking there for Royal. All the links die, and this was what I feared, really. The riskiness of this play is that if you don't get any damage with those links, you just yep. sacrifice a huge amount of economy in a game where you're already behind economically from the from the very start. This is why it always pays off to prepare like that as a Terran player, to just sacrifice SEVs mining to just guarantee your survival going forward into the next phase of the game. You see so many Terran players make that mistake of just, you know, going through the motions on autopilot, just trying to do their build order like they want to, but you have to make these micro adjustments to just guarantee success against like um, Zerg timings like that. And I really like to see Royal not making any cuts at all. Really strange that Queen made it look like he was going to go all in and then didn't go all in but then still ran his lings in do you know what i mean yeah that yeah, was, was a little bit peculiar that was a bit of a, a weird maneuver there for queen um i feel like if you're going to threaten and you've got your opponent like holding all of his scvs off the line or most of his scvs off the line isn't it better to just allow him to do that and continue to you know represent that you are going all in um you i think might so have yeah hidden. yeah i mean he might, he might have been he might have been trying to star sense it out and like try and double bluff uh royal and like wait and uh, assume that he was gonna run the scvs back at a certain time or something and just miscalculated but yeah i can't think of why he would press the issue like that otherwise i think he saw that the marines came out of the bunker or some of them came out of the bunker to deal with the lings behind the mineral patch and then he thought that he could run in and Maybe. you know tr get them or block them from getting into the bunker but the scvs were there they prevented that block and um yeah now here we are with a pretty sizable lead for royal finally the mutas are going to come in start to deal a little harassment damage one scv has gone down here so far but we don't have seven mutas okay two three now pretty good start here with very little bruising going on uh to these mutas doesn't have that one shot potential just yet but he does Ooh. get okay there we go now he's got eight mutas he can come in and start to one shot here there's another kill this is looking a little bit better now he needs to get quite a few scv kills though i feel to really start to even this out yeah i mean it's not quite back to a 50 50 split but it's much closer than it was before at least he's smoothing out those uh edge issues and now going to be swinging back around into the main base there's not a huge force of turrets here just one on this mineral line at the bottom so he has to respect that and keep bringing his bio down here and he's he looks like he's coming to the natural with something there is so is that a zergling yeah, yeah he's tried to come in here with a zergling to be a little bit cute here couple of links trying to be tactical in the natural expansion while pulling the bio into the main trying to be as annoying as possible and keep royal in pure task switch mode so his economy is uh, not too min maxed three turrets can hit these mutas as they fly in and out so queen just gonna back off from this line for now oh some more scvs here rotating around to the back of the mineral patches but queen not gonna go for them instead opening up the position with uh the turrets going down three sunken colonies being made back at home this is uh, a dive here from queen he wants to go into the main base and deal as much damage as he can 
It's actually forcing Royal to head back. If Royal sent his Marines across the map and didn't have them here to defend, Queen might be able to pull this main base apart, but everything is coming back right now for Royal. He's actually sending... Uh, scratch that. He's sending some Marines down to the bottom left-hand corner. Let's see if he can kill this third base, potentially. Uh, there is one Overlord that's going to spot this right now. It just spotted it. Let's see if Queen reacts. He does start to react. No, he's actually going to dive in the main. He just cancels everything down here. He's going to go for a huge dive into the main. Let's see what kind of damage he can get done. I mean, Royal's barely mining this natural expansion right now. He's not firing in all cylinders by any stretch of the imagination. He is going to be getting the kill on this hatchery in the bottom left, but Queen may be able to find compensation uh, for that in the way of putting more and more pressure on him. He's doing a dive bomb into the main base. He has to lift up the command center to get into that pocket. It's a very nasty pocket to get back into if there's a comms that in the way and every all the SUVs mining, but does manage to force the mutas out of that top right pocket of the the map here but now maybe able to get more and more of these scvs the natural expansion is much more fortified than it was with those two turrets now being rebuilt and the mutilus force is small enough that it can't just keep killing turrets all day but it's still getting pretty good trades on this bio and eventually might better come back in here into the main base where there's no more turrets so he has to keep fighting these mutas the best ability finally going to be kicking them out of the town but not before getting one more scv kill on the exit i don't think this was enough um we're yeah. gonna start a queen's nest now queen he was hoping for a lot more damage when he sacked the third base i think and he lost a lot of his mutas as well he's reproduced some of those and he's ready to potentially dive back in but there's plenty of marines here and the valkyrie comes out so this is really going to get pushed back quickly um looks like he might try to dive on that but royal just very very good with his marine and valkyrie control always supporting that unit and getting the maximum value the maximum amount of juice as you said earlier yeah. being squeezed out of that unit and queen has just been completely forced back i mean he's got a very similar supply but that doesn't really tell the story because we're lacking gas right now queen should have a third base online with the potential for a third gas but he just doesn't have that and he's gonna struggle to produce the units that he needs to deal with this valkyrie and marine composition that's a lot of scv kills there actually yeah. wow getting quite a bit of damage on some of these hurt scvs i don't know what do you think about this game right now I mean, honestly, because of the continued damage, it's it's kind of even. But eventually, Royal will recover and put the pressure back on. But to be honest, he did cancel one of the starports. So it will be only one starport worth of production initially. And it uh, did take a long time for the second gas to finally get uh, online here for Royal. So relatively speaking, Queen's okay on paper, but that will change very quickly with the next like two minutes or so. So, uh, I mean, if he can somehow use this Muta Force to secure a third base right here, right now, while teching up, I mean, maybe this game's playable. I think Queen's going to gamble on a hold position lurker play. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's he got will. some lurkers way out there in the middle. Um, he's trying to bait things down towards his third base. He's placed the third base down in that bottom left-hand corner. Uh, once again, maybe, you know what? If he tries to dive towards the main right now, Royal might send his Bioforce to clear out that third once again, and that could result in a big... Uh, a big kill here on a ton of these Marines. Oh, there's two more lurkers yeah. there on the left-hand side. Is he going to thread the needle and walk right between oh, both of these? That would be insane. The star, sense. the star sense on these players saying, can you believe it? Look at this. What absolute handsome nerds are they? That's ridiculous. Flying into the main. There's no turrets here. Where are all the turrets for Royal? He's just neglected building any of them because of the lack of scvs the lack of mineral income it's really hurting his economy if he has to build more turrets right now so he just foregoes that and he's really going to pay the price losing a ton of scvs here queen actually ahead in supply for yeah. maybe the first time this game uh, he has been uh, a little bit ahead of the supply earlier on, but uh, like you said earlier, hasn't really been telling the story, but he is going to be getting the kill on this hatchery yet again. We'll be able to cancel it though and get some of his money back at the very least, so that's not like the worst case scenario there. The worst case scenario was like the hatchery finishes and then Marines start shooting it and kill it, but we might get the Marines on the exit though. Oh, they see him. Oh! He, uh, it's just absolutely crazy. Was that good to scan ahead? He like he, he kind of smells it. He knows the like the absolute game sense on Royal right now is kind of insane, to be honest with you. 
It is pretty crazy, but that's a lot of lurkers. Is he going to be able to dive the front? I mean, it seems like a very risky play, but... Yeah. I mean, how far away is this defiler? We should have one popping out here in a moment. If he just puts, you know, five lurkers here right at the front and prevents... Uh, Royal for moving out on the map. Maybe he can get a Defiler to the front and deal with this. It's going to require some good Scourge Micro, though, because he doesn't want to keep losing uh, his uh, Defilers and Lurkers all the time to these vessels irradiating over and over again. Oh, and he's going to be encroaching on his position more and more. He's fighting for every inch now. He was giving a lot of space for free from Royal because of this marine excursion into the southwest quadrant here. So he's been able to get up to the rally point for free. So now there's a lot of danger here. But this this force that's out on the map can catch the Defiler en route here. So Queen's desperately trying to see if he can clear up this force with Muta Ling so that he can escort the Defiler safely. It looks like he's going to get the cleanup on Isle 5 as well. So now the Defiler can come across and put a lot of pressure on. And already the Irradiance have been used on these lurkers there's nothing to kill this defiler now plus one armor is done here as well for queen that's actually going to help him a lot uh in pushing in here uh it's going to help the links to trade a little bit better it's going to be harder for these marines to just gun down the uh gun down the lurkers as well here we go he's pushing forward almost gets a kill on one of those uh, one of those science vessels but the defiler pushing right up into the natural is huge getting the dark swarm here right on the natural and this is a much different game than we saw uh, earlier with the this dark swarm in the natural is way more devastating to uh royal here he has not the greatest economy and his army is much much smaller his count of vessels is also uh, quite diminished we are going to lose these valkyries finally not getting as much juice out of those ones as the earlier but this army moving around the backside might be able to cut off the third base or at least stop more reinforcements for from getting up here yeah the boys had to be pulled out of the natural expansion the queen is back in town the matriarchy is here and going to be uh having to sacrifice this 12 o'clock position to just try and guarantee a checkmate move getting on top of the pattern production right now is absolutely game ending you will be killing this 12 o'clock base so it kind of relegates queen to having to finish the game with these two gases but that's still enough gas in the tank for another five minutes churning away on this two to one base ratio to get on top of these barracks and try and finish out the game there is a few vessels left in a beautiful plague on those vessels and bio units though absolute monstrous finish from queen very textbook ending to this game but he will be shutting um royal out here i don't see how royal can recover well royal's blocking any more reinforcements from coming across the map but i mean even just slowly irradiating down each and every one of these lurkers is going to take too long <sighs> yeah, it looks like all the SCVs going down here. The lurkers are trading out brilliantly. We have some fire bats popping now. Finally going to try to get rid of these lurkers. He's almost going to get it. Looks like he does pick that off. Ling's still here doing work, though, and we've only got two barracks worth of production. We have some mutas coming across the map now, too. They can dive on top of all of these irradiated science vessels. My God, that's a lot of science vessels, but here we go. Oh. Flying in to pick them off. Three, four, go down immediately. There's another one falling to the Scourge as well. There's still a Lurker and a Defiler here in the main base. There's hardly any economy left for Royal. So even on just two gases, it seems like Queen will be able to clutch this one out. Yeah, I mean, it's a valiant effort from Royal trying to utilize the fire bats to recover. Another beautiful play going down on the remaining infantry force, and SCVs just being denied at every turn to mine. It's actually zero income from Royal as these SCVs are on the transfer uh, right now. Does manage to snipe off that lurker, but it's only going to buy him just a few valuable seconds. He's going to have to tap out. Queen's just going to non stop rally units across the map. There is a couple of fire bats to try and bully off these lings, but with one good surround, they will do dying. Base down in the bottom left-hand corner for Queen. A backup, just in case Royal somehow manages to survive this onslaught, but doesn't seem like that'll be happening. A lot of lurkers coming here. More defilers. There should be a plague as well. The plagues are really clutching things out for Queen. Make it so hard for Royal to even hold this ramp. He really wants to hang on and try to win this game. He's looking at that prize pool, the all-kill prize, very high right now, but he's not going to be able to take it home. Queen finally bringing it back for the Zerg squad.
Okay, jumping into this game on Minstrel, we've got Queen versus Sharp. Queen pulling it off against Royal. It's kind of shocking how similar the game with Saxory versus Royal went, but how different the actual result was there. A little bit of extra finesse out of Queen in that game. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Like someone like Saxory, he's a very potent macro player, very strong with his control as well. But someone like Queen just has that extra little bit of like, you know, finesse where he can execute. Uh, like, for example, Saxory probably wouldn't have been able to shut down that Bioforce. That was, uh, you know, gold with um, intercepting that Defiler moving out. And whereas Queen is like able to comfortably navigate those strange game states and you know, constantly changing environments with a bit more uh, potency that someone likes actually not able to deliver on uh, in recent times, at least. Well, I think a huge factor as well was Queen was able to spend his money during that entire kind of crazy series of events, whereas Saxer was having a much harder time. Uh, no. Queen also upgraded Plague, knowing that that was going to be a, a big, significant help to him breaking through into the main base um it ended up paying huge dividends it feels bad though when you're on just two gases to spend all of those resources to upgrade that spell but it is so useful when your opponent is right. backed up into a corner like that when they're pushed back into like such a defensive position one huge plague hitting the entire army and all the vessels can absolutely change the game and it did in that last one yeah, I mean, it's like you, you could try and make like two pairs of Scourge instead of getting that upgrade, snipe the two vessels now and just, yeah, never get the upgrade. But sometimes if you do, you know, invest into that, it, it will have a lot more return than just potentially sniping two vessels. And yeah, we saw that, that in that game, that's for sure. I'm hoping now uh, with that little bit of momentum shift, we'll see a bit more of an even series going forward. I wouldn't want to see Queen get knocked out by Sharp here either, but... We might be seeing that. Sharp is uh, pretty good with his timing builds, but I would say that he's a little bit outshined by Queen. Yeah, I tend to agree with you there. This map may end up playing a factor uh, because there is a, a bit of difficulty taking a third base here as Zerg. There's no really close third right. base that you can take and transition into Hydra Defiler and... Like, even if you take the bottom left-hand corner, um, it's it, any of these bases, it's, it's pretty tough to defend with just a few lurkers. So it'll be tough. It'll be tough here for Queen. I'm not sure what kind of strategy he wants to go for on Minstrel, but it seems like you would probably lean towards more of a sulky style mutilisk Ling, you know, clean up. It, just the difficulty here is that it's not a big wide open map in the center there's not a lot of ways to just come you know into a good position and actually surround the army whichever lane right. sharp decides to push on he's gonna have walls on either side of him it's just it's just very hard to synchronize the uh the lineup of attacks because of how the the, the geography of the map is not you know very easy to navigate to get your armies to synchronize while moving around you need to have like perfect uh knowledge on where the the, the terran army would be at all times and to calculate how long it would take your links to wrap around and come down the new lane of attack yeah it's a little bit tricky to navigate so it's not so straightforward in those newer link cleanups as uh, we would hope for but uh I'm, I'm curious to see what Sharp's approach is going to be um, against someone like Queen. Is, is he going to just like go for like some crazy, really strong two base timing here? Or is he going to try a more standard approach knowing that Queen has an awkward third to deal with? Well, Sharp is capable of doing all those plays and more. You know, he's very competent with a mech transition as well. We could see him... Uh, go for more of a standard play and then eventually transition into to vultures and mines all over the map. I think mine, right. vulture mines would be really strong here because of the, the way that the lanes work. You've got uh, just some free units to throw down uh, to defend each of those lanes. The mines are going to help to spot counterattacks coming from different directions as well as clean up some of the units uh, that are pushing in those directions. So... 
Yeah, I think Sharp is capable of doing a lot here. It seems like he wants to go for a pretty standard. This has been very strong lately. Plus one for Rax play. So he's going to have very strong Bioforce mid game. But he's not going to really have a great timing here to push across the map at five minutes. And you can see Queen identifying that with the lings out here at the front. Still five minute 30. He hasn't started to push out yet. So Queen won't need to place any sunken colonies at his natural. He's just going to play defensively and until he gets his mutilus out here on the field. I do like this choice from Sharp, though. I think having this bigger threat of Marines out with the awkward third that Queen has to contest with is not going to be super easy for him to defend that. And being able to apply pressure by guaranteeing the Marines being able to come out onto the map to fight for control, I think is going to be very important to Sharp's game plan, no matter what he wants to do after this. Yeah, we've got Queen, bottom left-hand corner, grabbing that gas, flying his Mutalus in here, but Sharp is immediately on top of that. He knows exactly where Queen wants to begin this threat, and he's going to force that back immediately. There's a bunker here at the natural, so this little Ling stab that was hoping to maybe damage a turret or something like that is not going to really do much. Um, we should have marine range pretty soon as well it's uh, gonna be finishing up here in a moment and before then i guess we're gonna lose one supply depot maybe an scv as well but i mean these are acceptable losses i think for sharp right now he's gonna be able to get that production back online in just a moment getting a couple more S uh, supply depots there in the main base and although this is a little bit of an annoyance i think that really that's all it is just a slight annoyance here as now Sharp is able to push out on the map with range and plus one. He's going to be feeling pretty strong. Yeah, it's a little hiccup in the ebb and flow of the game, but he had a few supply depots already on the way. So he's already going to be able to churn back up on the production and pretty much spend all his money as he would like to anyway. Just a tiny bit of a slowdown already moving out onto the map, like you say. Looks like Queen wants to just backstab with the muters while making a bunch of panic sunkers. Five sunkers are on the way, but not, not all of them are close to being finished up yet. There might be a bit of a timing with Sharp coming in. At the very least, going to be killing some of these overlords and now kind of flipping the script on Queen, putting him in the supply block situation, which is maybe a little bit more of a, an annoyance for Queen, because I doubt he's got two overlords popping out anytime soon. Jeez, Queen, he wanted to backstab and just hit the main base, but four turrets there completely pulls pushes him away. He's going to evacuate all the drones right now and just head back home. He can run through those eggs. Uh, I didn't even see there's eggs there. Did, is that a change to Minstrel? That must be a, a recent change. Uh, it was usually I think we saw that. Min mineral we patch? saw that last time, but I, I think that's a change from one of the earlier iterations, but I think that was there in the last week of KCM as well, those eggs. Okay. So a change there to the map. The third base is going to go down once again. Queen in another desperate situation. We've had so many of these games lately uh, where the third base goes down, and now Queen going to dive in here. I mean, I... I was thinking wow. about earlier when he had the opportunity to dive in when the Marine Medic was going across the map. I'm really shocked he didn't try to take over the barracks. There's only two turrets there. There's four turrets over the main base. Instead, now getting over top of this starport, shutting down the transition for a little while. Eventually, Sharp is going to be able to overpower this, especially as his Marines come back home. But Queen is doing a pretty good job with this, killing off quite a few SCVs and really slowing down the tech right now. Yeah, I mean, he's managed to keep control over the production area, so he's going to eventually, like, recover and be able to kick these muters out of his base. But I suppose he did get a reasonable amount of SCVs uh, killed. Oh, he's going to intercept the muters on the exit. So many muters. Beautiful interception from Sharp. Actually, world-class interceptions as well. Perfectly boxing in that entire mutilist flock. There's only five left remaining. This is absolute insanity, they're saying. Really well executed from Sharp. I'm impressed. Sharp has my heart. My god, what a great play there. I mean, that's like the the what you would imagine to be the most optimal way to deal with those mutas yeah. as they're flying out. You just box them in and perfectly surround and kill all of them. Don't let any escape. No prisoners, but it's so hard to execute, man. It's so crazy to try and get all of your marines to stand in exactly the right place if you make any misclicks your army is going to go wandering off in the wrong direction and sharp just makes it happen 
the absolute optimal cleanup there and now queen with just a few mutas i mean he has to build mutas right now to try and slow this push down because plus one plus one marines coming across the map he could actually just break straight through the natural if there's no lurkers I don't think he can actually because he only got oh, one yeah. single medic with the whole medic. group. Like, yeah, he can't actually break through without medic support. And Queen even sniped one of the additional medics that was made to kind of group up with that. So, yeah, absolute sausage party right now. Only one girl was invited, and there's like 20 guys just standing around her, Sam. Yeah, that's a um, bit of a poor ratio there for Sharp's army. He's going to move back, though, collect a few more ladies to bring with him to the party. We've got uh, some lurkers on the field, though, I think, by now, and maybe even a hive as well. But Queen is in a much worse position than he was against Royal in that last game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's uh, almost doubling the supply of Queen right now as well. Still has this third base completely shut down. So, yeah, everything looks pretty pretty clean here. I mean, the only thing that's going uh, bad for Sharp is that he kind of didn't have any window of putting any additional pressure on without having like good medic support here but nonetheless is looking pretty strong against queen going forward has this marine chasing down this drone in the bottom left as well so that's going to be another minute delay on getting that third base set up yeah i don't think he'll be able to get the third base this game and sharp is starting to pump out some vessels that's really the killing blow for a two base zerg player you just don't have the income to deal with the loss of life uh, that's going to be coming from constant irradiates on all of your gas units. A great irradiate there, but a good pull out by Queen as well. It's going to keep those pretty high on HP. Ooh, walking into some lurkers. Didn't have those on hold position though. Uh, with the science vessel being pulled back, he might have been able to get some really big kills, but he will fall back for now. Queen has the hatchery going up in the bottom left hand corner. He realizes that he's just not going to be able to sustain with only two gases and there's no real way to kill sharp just yet yep queen's pull out game on point for the party and gonna be able to try and just navigate with these mutas but he's taking a big irradiate there didn't quite split it out quick oh beautiful boxing from sharp again he's doing a great job of trying to isolate these mutalisks as they're in the the exit vector but does manage to get away with his life just barely with the majority of those mutas remaining but marine force moving into the south west base now four lurkers have been sent down here to try and fortify this but there are um, a lot of radiates available to try and break this mutalist force coming in to try and help clean up but another radiate can be softening up the remainder of those he doesn't split out from that stack so most of these mutas are now critically injured it has got these lurkers positioned in such a way that's very difficult for the marines to come down the ramp though yeah this is not a difficult area to circumvent though you can just head down here to the right hand side and you should be able to slide into that base at a better angle and queen just gonna tap out gg sharp takes a victory here yeah. very well played by him kind of a gambly maneuver though by queen not defending bottom left and just going for the the, the main base there didn't end up paying off right. Here we are with Jadong hitting the field. There's still one revive in the pocket here for Zerg, but it's not looking good. Jadong needs to pull some heavy weight here. Dominator is this next map, and Terran poised for victory. Yeah, neither of them bought their pizza cutter, though, so I'm a little bit disappointed in that. You'd, you'd think that the, the map... Maybe it's just hard being a map maker. You haven't really got much of a salary going on for you as a map maker, so you can't even afford to cut your pizza correctly. I know that's hurting your OCD right now, isn't it, Sean? Yeah, it yeah. is. It really is. It's um tough to square that away. We've got Dominator, the uh, predecessor, not the predecessor, the um, copy, I guess, or the... What's the opposite of predecessor, Shun? Help me out with my English here. Uh, I'm too successor. distracted by the yes, successor, but I'm too distracted by this this the pizza right now. <laughs> the successor to Gladiator here, Dominator. They need good branding. Uh, maybe a Polygon Pizza. How about that? <laughs> the third, the three-player version, not quite as symmetrical, and uh, it's a little bit triggering to some players, some people. Some casters who might be watching this, we've got a 12 hatch from Jadong and 
Sharp gonna open up with a pretty standard one. Rax fast expand, no gas here from him. CC will be coming down shortly. Yeah, um, J Dong is. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping J Dong just does like you know like a straight up like two hatch muta, nothing crazy, but uh, he might just do like a a more normal like 2.5 hatch. But I want to see him do just a straight up two hatch tech build here. Yeah, you want to see him put on the pressure. I mean, we've had so many yeah. scrappy games so far. Is Jadong up to that task? I really like him more when he goes for uh, really deep macro games. I feel like he has a lot more power in those type of situations than something really scrappy where someone like Zealot or Shine or Queen is going to have more success, I think. Yeah, I think that would suit his style more now, but I'm thinking more of like the Jadong of old. Uh, mm. He's going to have to get out of here with this drone. A little bit of an annoyance with this naked marine move out. Going to be denying a tiny bit of mining time. Nothing too crazy. Uh, as long as you're not losing the drone, it's okay. Losing a little bit of mining time here. Yeah, it's uh, a funny kind of interaction here with Sharp going all the way across the map with one marine just to deny mining time for a couple of seconds. But that's just oh. how close the games are right now that's just how like figured out everything is at this point well this is how you play starcraft at the highest of levels you force interactions no matter how small those interactions may be who knows maybe your opponent even though he knows what to do he makes like one tiny mistake and uh suddenly he's slightly behind and uh, yeah it's, it's good to, to always you know ask questions of your opponent and make sure he's got the right answers the conversation continues here between Sharp and Jadong. Looks like Sharp going to throw down a pretty fast eBay. Seems like he wants to go for another plus one early. I'm um, going to slow down his other upgrades, but... Uh, and also his timing push, his window here to go across the map and deal some damage, but it will allow him uh, a very strong mid-game Terran army just like we saw against Queen. Will Jadong be able to stop that? Will he be able to keep a third base alive? Because it's been a real struggle lately for the Zerg players. Yeah, it seems to be of a trend, doesn't it? I mean, that was like Zerg versus Terran of old. It was very centric around just, you know, breaking that third base, making the whole game revolve around that. And it seems like Zerg's been having a rough time of it lately, securing that third base. Uh, Terran's just getting better and sharper with their, their timings. And, you know, Zerg's gonna have to compensate and make some more micro adjustments leading into that mid-game phase to navigate it with a bit more finesse and you know having you know, some kind of deviation to their normal shenanigans because it seems like Terran have got their number for that phase of the game right now yeah absolutely it seems like they have uh, the Zerg number figuring out these guys pretty well and this play is just so good from Sharp every single time wow getting two marines not bad not bad okay. at all but with the four racks play is it really worth it we're going to be pumping out so many marines here in a moment sharp is going to be really well, really heavy on that marine production it does it does allow jadong to commit into muters without like any sunkens or additional links which is nice to make him feel confident about that and it also does reduce the you know the ability to defend against these muters just ever so slightly having a little bit of dps re reduced so it might have a little bit of a a little bit of tactical edge here for Jadong, but he's maybe not going to get too much done. He might actually better get this building SUV. If he gets like one of these building SUVs, this could spiral a little bit out of control here for sure. Wow, a bit behind on that uh, eBay or the, the turret production, despite having the eBay really early on here. He kills the turret over the barracks, and we don't have range right now for Sharp. So, you know, this build, one of the big weaknesses of it is that right at this timing, before you have plus one, you're going to have a very late range and a late stim. So he's got stim, yeah. but no range. Diving on top of everything, Jalen might just get a quick victory here due to the fact that Sharp was slightly late on turrets. 
This is exactly what I wanted to see out of Jadong. This is why the two hatch tech is uh, so potent. You can punish Terran players when they're just a little bit behind schedule like this. And he's going to do a lot of damage. And yeah, a tiny bit of damage can spiral just so much out of control. It's a really compounding effect for Terran. Like the amount of minerals they have to divert to suddenly making crazy amounts of turrets. And they're losing so many units that they're not even trading efficiently anymore. So you can get on top of their production area. And, you know, they have to their cost efficiency rating just plummets and then they're investing so many resources into just staying alive and they're not growing anymore and in fact they actually start to dwindle like we see here sharp's just gonna tap out and wow jadon might be leading the charge here for the zerg squad he might even be able to like tuck that revive into his pocket and just go all the way here well i'm happy that jadon managed to win that i'm not so happy about the in the way that sharp ended up losing it's unfortunate that he just Missed that timing, didn't have the turrets ready uh, at the appropriate moment there. That's, uh, that's never how you want to see the game end, but I'm glad that we have another Zerg victory here and that this series is going to get ever so slightly closer. Let's see who gets sent out next year for the Terran squad. Will it be speed or light? It's coming up next. Light speed, gentlemen. <clears throat> speed is going to be sent out here against Jadong. Monty Hall is the map choice. This is going to be a wild one. Let's see if speed can take him out. Speed, a very big TVZ specialist. I'm very curious to see what he's going to pull out on this map. Yeah, it seems like he's finding a lot more success in this matchup than TVP. I think what you were saying um, off air about he was he kind of crushed it recently a little bit in that matchup, but not doing as well in the other one. So it would be interesting to see how he lines up against Jadong on a map that's as crazy as Monty Hall. I wonder if uh, Speed's done his homework and has uh, got some assistance in, in them preparing for this because Terran players can have a very strong showing on this map if they've done their homework. Yeah, Speed, he played in the SSL qualifiers uh, just recently and he managed to 2-0 both Art User and killer in order to make his way into that uh, round of 24. Now, Jadong slipping the drone over the center patch. He's going to go ahead and grab his natural over here. Will he build a third hatchery over by these mineral patches to make mining this out a little bit easier? We saw that from Shine before, but that was in a different matchup. That was in uh, ZVP, which the third hatchery is much more standard. Now, slipping a SCV over the center patch as well. Speed going to choose correctly and gets the scout here on this hatchery. I mean, how much luck... Are we going to see out of these you know, it's Terran crazy, right? it's almost players? Like there's a spy. It's almost like there's a spy giving intel to the uh, Terran dugout, being like, this is what they're going to do. They're going to go down the middle lane. <laughs> Unbelievable. He's going to go for a factory here, and it's perfectly positioned. This is just disastrous for Jadong. Crazy. He doesn't have any way to scout this. He doesn't have a drone over. Um, maybe he can scout this potentially with the Overlord, but it's just so tough. He's actually sending it over to the top right, I think. that He's just not going to scout this. And we're going to have a Vulture coming in here and ruining his day right off the bat. Monty Hall has just been a disaster for Zerg. It's a rough map for Zerg, honestly. If, if the Terran player's done his homework and he's got a little bit of luck on his side, it's just a, a bit of a an uphill battle, to be honest with you. It is a bit awkward for Zerg players, um, especially in the early to mid phase. You can have a very strong showing as Zerg later on in the mid to late game stages, but until then, Terran can kind of get away with doing all kinds of shenanigans, and it looks like the shenanigans this time are going to be even more effective than they should with the lane being guessed correctly from speed oh no we're gonna go double uh double starport wraith as well this is this is tragic yeah. right now for jadong he doesn't have a sunken colony here it looks like he's gonna start one now but it's so late 
gonna block the drone not allow it to build the sunken that's so brutal and now we're just gonna have to evacuate the natural this is really really rough for jadon can he actually get the sunken he does get it down oh that was almost another block there by speed would have been nearly game ending damage had that been blocked and i mean as it stands it's already pretty game ending here we don't even have a spire that didn't make spire didn't make shouldn't oh hold me didn't make hey, this is rough i mean i hope he's got link speed on the way i mean you'd think so he's gonna better kill more or less infinity amount of links even with link speed here's the link speed kicking in finally gonna go for a wrap around, but there's not many links remaining and he's starting to camp the eggs as well what? four links hatching in that's right yes going down in the natural expansion it's gonna be a long time for that control and does get this round on this top vulture taking out a half hp sliding to box the vultures in towards the south of the map not quite getting perfect chance we'll maybe catch one of these vultures with he does manage to get one of his vultures. They'll start to box in these other two, but it looks like there's just significantly enough good enough micro from speed where he's going to kill all of these lings and kind of reset Jadong yet again. GG finally called. The revive's going to come out. Will they give it to Jadong after this showing? Will they just like kind of like, you know, take it for uh, as it is, a bit of bad luck? Or are they going to give it to Queen maybe? Jadong. Fuck, man. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, this is rough. Hey, uh, morning, Post Malone. Welcome to the cast. How you doing, buddy? Don't worry, guys. I can't read Japanese or Taiwanese. I know who he is. Okay, here we go. Set number seven, Shun. It's been an incredibly quick final so far. Jadon's just been revived. Yeah, speedy finals, that's for sure. Yeah, moving along at light speed, which is the remainder of the Terran squad with a revive in the pocket as well to bring back the likes of Royal or Sharp even. It's absolutely monstrous. Jadong is going to be the champion of choice here for the Zerg squad, but he's got three crazy high skill players to contend with right now. It's a bit, I don't know if, if I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm feeling it for Jadong. He certainly is capable of it, but there's going to be a lot of luck and uh, other things going against him. Yeah, it's just not looking good at all for the Zerg squad. I'm I'm feeling a little bit sour about this right now. I thought we were gonna have, you know, a Zerg victory. Everything was gonna be fantastic. Terran just dominating though, making it yeah. so hard on these Brent on these new maps. I was kind of wondering with you aloud before the cast even started where these new maps going to be favoring zerg or terran and it really feels like terran is just taking the better end here I usually terrans, usually terrans have a hard time on new maps yeah i remember saying to you though i did feel like you know with all the map thing pool considered it was looking a little bit terran favored in my opinion well i think you might have been right i hope that zerg players are going to figure this out uh, in the ssl this season and have a good showing but you know already in the ssl there's far less zerg players than there are any other race of course they've just won the asl twice in a row so <laughs> it's not like i really have anything to to really to seriously complain about but uh it is looking pretty good right now for Terran and speed here he's gonna open with a one rax fe we are on Pantheon now. Jadong in the top left hand corner is open for it with the 12 racks or with the 12 hatch, excuse me. Let's see what he can do. Now, do you think Jadong's taking this 12 o'clock with the, the, the cross high ground defensive fortification? Or is he taking something, you know, just like another main base in the top right or something here? I think natural in the top right would yeah. be pretty decent like the the openings to the natural are not that wide and i think it's a reasonable assumption to make that he might go for that um coming back with these two drones we're seeing exactly the same opener as we saw uh, against sharp uh, with jadong right he's just gonna pressure there with the right. one marine and then backs off forces a tiny bit of loss of mining time keeps that marine alive 
Um, just two links being produced here by Jadong. Everything looking exactly the same as that game on Dominator. But will Speed have all the timings right here? I imagine he will. All of that coming in before 10 minutes. Yeah, I imagine so. Ooh, and throwing down the Academy uh, right away. So we'll be maybe applying a bit of a 2 racks timing here. Most of these games have been eBay first, prioritizing the upgrade on that plus one weapon. So mixing up a little bit here with a potential timing attack at five minutes, putting on some pressure of Jadong. It's going to be a 2.5 hatch from him as well. You know, I really like what Speed is doing with the the two racks here um, and hiding an SCV in the top right hand corner. A lot of yeah. Terran players won't do this. They'll keep trying to scout the main to figure out what's going on, but Speed's just going to rely on that faster academy with the scans to go ahead and figure out what the tech is and then he's going to have this one scv ready to scout and figure out where the bases are going to be from jadong there's only a few different locations that are possible right there's top right hand uh corner main base the natural and then the top center is he actually going to spot this no way, Jadong finds it. That's crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is kind of wild. I mean, so far he's only making one comm set at a time. Um, you do want to kind of optimize when you make those comm sets. It kind of cuts two SCVs worth of production. So if you make two at the same time, you're basically like down four SCVs uh, production-wise. So he's elected to make just a singular scanner, trying to rely on that SCV scout to provide him some valuable intel. But now he's kind of in the dark with that being shut down. Jadong on the high ground with some links. We'll be catching one of these Marines as well, before retreating so pretty well optimized from Jadong buying some additional precious seconds for that second sunken finish up here but there is a timing here for speed to come in and maybe cross this oh my god he's gonna get on top of that first sunken are you serious oh no my god. speed just gonna get right in here and completely shut this down bit of a miscalculation oh. out of Jadong thinking that he had no more way. time here but the no rush distance so close and speed moving out just slightly earlier than you regularly would. I think he moved out there at like um, 4 minute 55 or something like that, like 5 seconds yeah. early. And well, the 450 is, actually the, 450 is actually the timing. Oh, okay. It's just very hard to hit those timings, yeah. Right. Well, that's... Um, that's rough. Jadong goes down. Zerg is out. Terran takes home the win that is not what i was expecting here for the final it really felt like a, a bit of a rug pull here in comparison to what we saw in the semi-final <laughs> I mean, kind of hard to compare. Yeah, the semi-final was kind of like, you know, explosive. And honestly, we've had kind of a crazy climactic season all around. A lot yeah. of build-up in the early to middle of the season. So I guess it kind of makes sense we would have somewhat of an anticlimactic finals with how crazy the rest of the season was going. I guess the, the script writers ran out of budget for the finale. Yeah, maybe so. Um, I guess that is a bit of balance there. Yeah. Week six was Can't insane. All the weeks up to that were insane. There's a, uh, a week eight, I think, was amazing as well. Um, guys, I think we're going to end right here. Any final thoughts there, Shun? Other than like that, that finals finished at light speed, like the remainder of the Terran squad, not really. Yeah, well, I mean, not the finals that we were hoping for. We're going to have to put a big anti-spoiler at the end of this so that people don't realize uh, exactly how quickly <laughs> this is going to end. That's for sure. Yeah, it's going to have... I haven't put an anti-spoiler on for such a long time because every week has been insane and it's gone so long, but... I mean, you had, we have the worst combination, right? We had the sausage party and, uh, you know, uh, the pullout game was on point, but, you know, a little bit of a premature end to the evening, maybe, unfortunately. Well, as you guys can see, KCM... He's uh, looking a little bit sick. You can tell because he's wearing the mask in Korea. You usually wear a mask when you're not feeling well uh, to prevent others from getting that uh, disease. So uh, head over to the link down below. I'm going to put that link down there for KCM's original VOD and uh, make sure to wish him well. Give him a like on his videos. Give him a sub too. Uh, we appreciate him a lot and we hope 
all the best for him. Uh, I don't know when we're going to get our next season. I think it might be next week, though, Shun. Right, yeah, because of the scheduling, they delayed it, so we might be seeing a quicker start to the season. We don't know quite yet, but as soon as we know, you guys will know because we'll be doing it and uploading it. Yeah, um, one caveat to that, though, and one thing that's making me um, think that it might be the week after is that tw uh, August 26, 27, and 28 is the... Um, is is going to be the SSL uh, group right. A, B, and C. Uh, well, it seems actually, a that, hectic lately. That doesn't quite contradict our schedule. So probably okay. Friday, um, the thirtieth, we might have the the first week of KCM. We'll see. We'll see though, guys. Uh, I'll try to keep you updated. I will make a post. Uh, on YouTube to let you guys know exactly what's going on. When I know, uh, you guys will know as well. So uh, stay tuned for that. Another great season here still coming forward uh, before the end of 2024. We do four seasons every single year. We really appreciate you guys coming out, hanging out uh, in the stream, watching the, the videos, the vo VODs as well on my channel. Appreciate all of you guys. Thank you so much to Shun as well for sticking it out the whole season, the whole year, in fact, uh, every pleasure. single week. It's been an absolute blast. I'm really, I'm actually kind of broken up about this final Shun. This is, this is rough. This is not <laughs> what I was expecting. Yeah, it's a little rough. I'm not going to lie. There's no way of like, you know, sugar. You can't, you can, you put a pretty bow on it. It's it's still a crappy present, unfortunately. It is what it is, guys. And I know, you know, a lot of people are disappointed in not seeing as strong of a, a you know, Protoss uh, performance as well. It is what it is. There's always next season. So stay tuned. We'll be back with more KCM action. I'm excited for the new season. I mean, this season was still electric despite the bit of a disappointing finals. Yeah, it's always. Uh, fun to have KCM while ASL is going on as well. Like sometimes players aren't able to get out and uh, perform right. if they're busy, you know, practicing or playing their games in the SSL or ASL. But the level of competition is a lot higher. There's a lot more on the line, right? You're playing against people that you might end up facing in that big tournament. So. Uh, if you end up losing or if you reveal a strategy that um, the, the player can use against you later on in, in the big tournament, then that, that could be to your detriment. It's it's interesting, right? Like, so much of this game is a mental game as well. Taking a win, a big win in KCM could actually give you the mental edge over your opponent in one of those, uh, in one of those matches like round of four, round of eight, a round of 16. Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, for sure. Well, guys, that's it for today. Uh, Anti-spoiler is coming up after this. So, uh, yeah, whatever the, the length of the video, just to be a little bit deceptive to you guys to make sure that you didn't get spoiled by that uh, video length. But we're going to head out now. Only two hours, Shun. Dude, it's like a whole hour shorter than we usually have for this show. That is crazy. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little bit wild, I'm not going to lie. I mean, we're so used to having just absolute stellar production quality in terms of how good the games are and like how close they are, so we're used to going the whole distance and the duration, but yeah, sometimes it's supposed to go like that, where you know it's just like a wham-bam, thank you ma'am, one hour, but usually we've not been having that for quite some time. Well, wham-bam, thank you ma'am, see you guys next week. Peace out. Thanks guys. Surf <laughs> Plus, night safe, dirty, Ellinger Ven. Snake, I met Ellinger Ven, so now I'm a force. See, the mix and it's a scary visage. Name, here's Casma. Now, position of the Alpha Season, the vest. 
Ja sama 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 Sir, if you're trying to get a new me, we to leave my exit of mine or not all the gears, guys. I didn't hearing it directly every time. And off my when it's just here, guys. I shouldn't have had that long. It's a sealed the saw. We need to go. Sir, allow for you to circle, guess, sir, girl, circle. See it when he said that. The next mix draw horse is all seven eight years, guys. Are free here for the least. I'm going to get no old answers. Ma. So seven eight, the world. I can knock up a sharp but in this back of wheel or for me after I mean as it this yeah the thing I just have a me master the fair let's feel me and nothing that was your scars the first year I've been because I understood the first time you never knew it's easy and I he's name at the least who was the soft position I'm saying only if he said it's how I said I was at a snaps go see in the show scars was in the snaps go see and this though is just here we all film all leave me with a mean this and it's just me I give up yeah just it you know I'm saying I'm just thinking all the if it ever feel but it was it hello Fine, then with that such, he's a nurse guy, sir, he's an abscat. Hey, I guess the mouse doesn't get up on the side, there's nothing on the exit. Stand in your own medicine, on Ashby, sir, girl, your own medicine, on Ashby. Spell the valve, but sir, Scott, stuff, got shot, bang, and a grist, roll the rope, but snuff, bang, and a licking, and a box, sir, five. Well, I was in my milk, but then I go to shine in the sneer, and it's easy, it says he's not a rich, and it was not. Like, you were in, I don't get a bill, or see if you say you are, or you are, but it's a girl. My brother, but it's not ours, the fun, it's the fun, I was thinking like, yeah. Or Stanson, it's an old scratcher, old moose, it's like it. Now I can go up in the annex or laugh it. Why the laugh it's a little wee. Moose and the kid make a little bit of a game, but not to sit in our first person, you let's take a shy here, you know, I run out of rooks. And now, game now, she's an exist in your episode, well, I thought it was like, and this is said, and it's her girl, or my very hero of shelf, but you need to make it. Nah, you fall back, nips that, and here, snips her off in your feet, and that's it, they hit her off, and they get. Yeah, lots of stuff now, sir. Feet and else bullets are out of the little or shine in the circle. I feel gives us a lot. I'm not gonna figure this guy's off the mill, but I'm gonna leave him sitting there. Oh, and then long he comes here, Scott's off a bit much, I'll leave him with it. Me, I started with a little sitting up, and the snap skill of shine in the dark and opposite, but she never made it. Here, when me, my friend is easy, Scott's of no air, we must have not all he looks at the next door, and the snap skill of shine to this. So, he's seen it. He's got some of us in their own room, when you're not sneezing, and everything. I don't think he's going to be able to see the suit, but I don't think he's going to be able to see the suit. I don't think he's going to be able to see the suit. I don't think he's going to be able to see the suit. I don't think he's going to be able to see the suit. I don't think he's going to be able to see the suit. I don't think he's going to be able to see the suit. I don't think he's going to be able to see the suit. I don't think he's going to be able to see the suit. I don't think he's going to be able to see the suit. I don't think he's going to be able to see the suit. I don't think he's going to be able to see the suit. Hurry, but I can just get next line. There's a little curious. There's no sign that that's all. Because he can get names and he can roast scratch surf and roast scratch. Her then that night source the circle up. If they had a day they were up. So if they don't want to sneak in the clear sky slot. Well, I'm sorry, what's this? It's really out for the streets. It's really out for the streets. They were in night or this guy might get there. What I can do is stuff now. That'll be him. So he's going to stuff now. So I've seen that. That'll be zero. I've seen that. It's me out of the sun. I'm like, I see how she's near him. But she's now full. Yeah, they were either off. And I'll run to the news of the last part. She's never standing at the news. This game will allow for the visit. So Lila and Nicola are really not at the night. Find the bang at my skin with the tie, and the shizzle broke, but that's an easy up. Here's guys, that's all I need so I can make, so the builder's guys are flinging their war shrines, and I get a serious storm to hit in that. Hold a lap, a little farm, and the fish, and I can fly to the game, it's all. No, I ain't ever some milliard, and I can get a sin to you lot, or see that. Here's guys, I'm more from the master's style, they're beside the next to sit here off, so many hours, sugar, a little bit like we went out there, we were gonna get sick up. I feel like I must be dying in my crop circle, I've said that rule, I guess the eight hours jerks, that he who is your clive, so I don't must have fought, get the feet being very thought of a little circle, and then you know, that's just up in the sea, feel it really, or we'll just cast a little or sneak to him. Ja, sie ist wirklich noch sehr schmeckt, dem Adirfeck, das war schon nicht gehört, ihn wird etwas am Boden gemacht, aber ich möchte noch nicht gehört, dass sie 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 nicht gehört
Jag har man ser ut med fem stark egen i stor i fjärde övning i mästerskap och mål och nummer samma sig. Men det så ser vi att vi visar att vi ser en väldigt stark egen och en ser vi en mest jag har sett att vi har en mest stark egen och 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 en vad det var vad det var det läs ni när jag hoppas för att det var väl inte en S nås ni inte nu ser jag vad det var som jag ska ge det ja whatever this hoppas det kan vi snå för några bilskar se upp ett vad som mest är i stället med fem sen och ska 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 Och nu ska vi se hur det smärtar oss nu. Men det är inte för att det är upp till oss att få upp sig att det är inte för 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 att det är inte Schnell mal da los und schnapps gibt's in der Ecke der Mia mir in der Ecke aber ich schlüsse auch die Fähre und noch der Film was für Snicken hat so was kann ich nicht mehr aber mir ist alle auch bedorf mir den Wesen und ich auf der Ecke nicht hier hier bis da das gibt's ja für die Wurf und schlüsse zahlen dann ob's der Lehr ich jetzt ja mir auch was auf mich schnapps gesetzt ja hat eine Zeit hier ab mal du gehst da ne will ich schön jetzt nicht gut so ihm sind was in der Ecke so ihm sind noch was schön das Ecke ja also ich mir gebe um fürs ein neuer Gambels Ecke ne so ich hier vor ab sind Ich gebe ihm starke Nachricht nach oben. Das ist ja auch stücklich. Ich sage also, ich habe nicht schnappt, ich sehe die Aufsicht hier, wenn du es auch. Ey, ich sage, ich mache es da, da läuft noch wieder. Der nächste ist die Wittgen, da wo ich stehe, da nicht ab. Ah, ne, ich mache es nicht. Snack, so ich sage, ich habe nicht schnappt, ich finde es nicht. Ich sage, 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 Ja, när jag ser kallt och när jag har pappa ser kallt så snor jag mig mera. Men jag har också inte den här ute när jag kan se så det kan inte vara jag. Jag är inte min hela min värld. Det är inte jag. Nej, det är inte alls. Det är inte jag. Jag är inte alls. 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 In the air, we'll have to sell ya. Oh, it's nothing you'll give me to finish that now. Here's Casper Fair, one of your own issues, and that's the fact. Well, see, I'm sorry, you're off, Miss. Here's Clive. Nej, men om jag kan om alla gäster skulle så säga varför jag inte var på hos Hirschkvarten, men så är det inte någon som jag känner så jag vill få det. Nej, om jag kan om alla gäster skulle säga varför jag inte var på hos Hirschkvarten, men så är det inte någon som jag känner så jag vill få det. Nej, om jag kan om alla gäster skulle säga varför jag inte var på hos Hirschkvarten, men så är det inte någon som jag känner så jag vill få det. Nej, om jag kan om alla gäster skulle säga varför jag inte var på hos Hirschkvarten, men så är det inte någon som jag känner så jag vill få det. Nej, om jag kan om alla gäster skulle säga varför jag inte var på hos Hirschkvarten, men så är det inte någon som jag känner så jag vill få det. Nej, om jag kan om alla gäster skulle säga varför jag inte var på hos Hirschkvarten, men så är det inte någon som jag känner så jag vill få Hier door zo vies je van mijn hart zelf kies je aan. Na, 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 Na to hear in there, he's the best artist that we've met. Fuck me, bitch. Well, the flash of limbs and the big ears got so red, so good. He'll or she, he'll share with one of us. I hear the fickle we see up north, and not the little one. I just got some old surgery. He was the good. That man from the north was like, you know, he's not even on the bus. He's far from the sea up north. He's near the old thing. I'm not the last thing in the real world. I'll see you soon. I'm near him now. Så nu är det en av de första favoriterna i hemmet. Jag har gått på det så att jag har sett det här lite. Jag har gått på det här som jag har sett det här som jag har sett det här. Jag har sett det här som jag har sett det här. Jag ser det här som jag har sett det här. Jag har sett det här som jag har sett det här. Jag har sett det här som jag har sett det här. Jag har sett det här som jag har sett det här. Jag har sett det här som jag har sett det här. Jag har sett det här som jag har sett det här. Jag har sett det här som jag har sett det här. 
Nej, det er for mye nød enn det er stedet for fascist. Gjør meg for fascist. Ja, det kan se takt av ysig norsk og stemmen, det ser opp. Mast at gasset sitt. Seus da for at seks min til deg gjør hus. Snakk jeg er ei. Som jeg tror jeg er en bakke kjart. Han er sånn, jeg tror han ikke snart får du alle stia her. Yes, no, we are. Was that this is? Was this is? Oh, I'm so sorry. Hurry, try to ask your sky sister below. Holy, I'll be in this is it. Then what I've not been in this week. This is the man. Sally stretch on what I'll do. I'll send half a little room say guy. Men her er Charfeeder, under deres valg, det er sånn at jeg skal stia og gi noe i den. Nei, men jeg er ikke det største. 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 Sitt at det blir skal sister for et sal, og så står han der der. Ah, det er ikke det største. Oh, he were here off, you know, here's the sea spray, he needs to look at the grass, the surf, and the rest of the mast. Slow now, my sake, you do it, you can have a little bit of a run on the snow.